Yes, sir. What's going on, brother? What up, brother? Salute. What's going on yeah. with you? Maintaining, bro. Listen, man, first and foremost, on behalf of myself, everybody on the check-in, everybody tuning in, uh, also on behalf of my, my co-host, my, my brother K. Jamal, man, we want to thank you in advance, man, uh, for taking the time out of your precious schedule to chop it up with us, to kick it with us, man. We appreciate you. Salute to you. Uh, Yo, brother. It's same same respect here, bro. I've been watching you. Man, you know what I mean? Seeing your progress. And I have the blessing. Appreciate you, man. And, and, and you know, I, uh, before... Well, first, I'm, you know what? Well, let me let me introduce you the proper way, man. Uh, for those that may not know who we are chopping it up with tonight, who we kicking it with, we have the pleasure of chopping it up with one of New Jersey's finest, uh, certified pro, um, Louisville University, one of Louisville University's finest. Uh, again, certified pro, Mr. Taqua Panero. Formerly known as the Quan Dean. Salute to you. Appreciate you, Thanks bro. For joining us. Yeah, man. Uh, so basically, like you said, our platform and our platform and just the the the, the podcast itself is yeah. pretty much an old day to you guys. Uh us paying homage. Us pretty much quote unquote giving you guys like guys like yourself and all of the guy all the other guys that we have chopped it up with giving you guys your flowers while you're still here. Um, you know, we feel like it's important that people somewhat be reintroduced to guys like you. And, yeah. you know, just, just to know that you guys have left your mark on the game in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So, again, man, I want to thank you for yeah. chopping up with us, man. And um, You've been having them killers on here, too, boy. Like I told you. Everybody I grew up on, you've been having them. I'm like, yeah, I got I to gotta get on here. Appreciate it, man. You know it's I mean? all love, man. It ain't, yeah. It's not, nothing but love, man. Nothing but love. One of, one, of the, um, one of the first questions that I wanted to ask you was, um, you know, you're originally from Jersey, born and raised. Mm -hmm. um, how'd you get started with the game? Who were some of your early influences? Coming up, I'm be honest with you. Uh, coming where I come from is on the shore, so it's a small, small town. So coming out of there, like you really gotta put in that work. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, it started with my grandmother. Just she, I, I told, I told the story years ago. Like she cut a cut a hole on the bottom of a fishing pole, mm. no backboard, and just you know, I mean, figure it out. So that's where my my accuracy came from. Came from her. Fishing pole. Fishing pole. On the gate, no, no backboard, just figure it out. And that's how I was able to get my, you know what I mean, my accuracy the way it was. So she must have saw something in me at, at an early age that, you know what I mean, nobody else seen, but how that's what started. How, now, how, if you can remember how old, how old were you when? When, when she did that, I was seven. Seven? Because it was right after my mom's died, I moved in with her. Okay. And she just, you know what I mean, she just made sure. Like, we'll go to... uh garage sales and just she'll find different stuff and be like, hey, listen. You know what I'm saying? So that's where it started. Wow. Yeah. wow, wow. What now? What age would you say you started to compete under the whistle and, and, and in terms of organized basketball? Got you. So what happened was, I, I don't know if you know the backstory. story, well, in consecutive years, my mom, my grandmother, my grandfather, they died in a row. So I ended up having to move in with my aunt, mm -hmm. and that was uh, she had she had three kids and, and like a three bedroom. So it was basically I was playing football and she didn't know, so I had to you know get mm -hmm. my uniform somewhere else, come back. So I I, I ended up uh, forging the permission slip and all that. Mm -hmm. But what happened was when when my mom died, the landlord over the apartment he. He kept tabs with me, you know what I mean? White white guy named uh, Patrick Whelan kept tabs on me, and he would take me, he took me to a Princeton basketball camp. Mm. Now, coming, where I, coming from where I come from to go to Princeton, like, you had to stay overnight. You had to, and that what opened my eyes. I'm like, this is, like, it shows you 
how the basketball players wake up in the morning, practice. You had to do everything that the the college team would do. And that just opened my eyes to like, oh, I could get out of here. And so he would take me around. Like the Central Jersey Hawks is when I officially started playing uh, organized. And what age would you say that was? That was 14. 14. 14. So, so now, now you're 14 and you are now pretty much, you're playing organized. Yeah. Um, can we say that you are now officially starting to fall in love with the game? I, I was always in love with it, but I just didn't, I didn't have that person to direct me and put me in a direction where to actually play. So I, it's not racial, but you know what I mean? I was on a, on a team, all white players, mm. and it's just me. Mm. That was the best thing that could have happened to me. I, I don't know if you saw a story with LeBron when he was like, he was introduced to the white culture. Like, right. it was like he, it was like he was in a in a shop. For right. me, it was the same thing. But you know, I had to have a chip on my shoulder because we playing against all black. You know, we got to come up north to Bergen, and they trying to take our heads off. And it's like I'm the token black guy. Like, go at him. Right. So I had to develop a, a certain type of uh, toughness that it, it led to. You know, I mean, going into Louisville, but yeah, it was it was tough. Now, how did you decide on attending Neptune High School? All right, so that's I had a best friend uh, named James Jones, and we used to play in the backyard every every day. And his uncle had had, had some money on him, and he heard my story, and he was like, "Yo, listen, I think you can make it to the league." And I'm I'm thinking at the time like. Fuck is you talking about? Like I make it to the league, you know what I'm saying? And so what he would do was he would be like, "Listen, uh, new patent leather Jordans come out. You want those? Yeah, he'll take me to the park, play against him. Older guy, bust his ass. He'll give me the J's. So he would listen. He would do this for a month straight. Now I got four pair of J's in my crib. He's like, we develop a relationship. And so uh, I played my freshman year at Red Bank Regional. And the coach didn't play me the whole year. You know what I mean? Like, I was supposed to be a phenom in that area. He just sat me on the end of the bench. So yep, now my you, man, played, you you played you played varsity your freshman year at Red Bank. I played with uh, Taj Holden with the Maryland. Okay. Yes. Uh, Sean Exani with the Ruppers. Yeah. So they had a they had a nice little team, and okay. the coach was just like, "Nah, you you not playing." At all. So he was he was like, "Yo." I'm going I'm to I'm let you move with me. I'm going to adopt you. Ended up adopting me and, and bought me the nuts on. Wow. Yeah. Wow. wow. And yeah. then from that point on, did you transfer that year? I transferred that at the end of the year. At the end of the year, you transferred. You go to Neptune. Yeah. Now, how, how, how was or what was the transition like going from Red Bank to Neptune? All right. So, like I told you, I was in a three-bedroom apartment. I go to a a house on the hill, two car garage. You know what I mean? It was house was plush. I go to there. I'm I'm first off, I gotta deal with that aspect of it. Like I ain't poor no more. I'm I'm middle class. Then I'm going to Neptune where they don't like they didn't like Red Bank. So I gotta prove myself to this whole town. And so it was rough all, and, over. all over. You know what I mean? But what happened was I was on the AAU circuit still. And I don't know if you know about the uh you know about the Long Island Panthers. So I'm playing yeah. yeah, I'm I'm playing a game. I forget who I'm playing against, but I don't know if you know my man Eddie Lau. If it wasn't for Eddie Lau, yes. I wouldn't Oh yeah, of course. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have got the Louisville. I'm just being Wow. He, he called me on Eddie the phone. Shout That's out my guy. Yeah. Yeah. He calls me on the phone, he's acting like he's Kurt something. You know what I mean, I don't know if you remember Kurt something from course, Brooklyn. With the with the exactly. Yeah. So he's calling like he's Kurt, and he's like, "Yo, you gotta come play for us." I'm like, "Who are y'all?" He's like, "Yo, Long Island Panther." He started naming Charlie Villain the way of, uh, you know, what I mean, uh, Kurt. He said he was Kurt and uh, Jay Frazier, yeah. Showtime, and I'm like, "They like, listen, just get on the flight." I'm like, what you mean get out? This level A, you is different. You know what I mean? Where I was at was not the sneaker company. They like, yo, just get on the flight. We got your shoes, everything. I get on the flight. 
I'm with Charles. I'm with I'm with the whole squad, and I I think I I can't remember, but I think I hit like seven threes the mm. first game. They like, oh yeah, and that whole summer we we swept everything, mm. and I came back my sophomore year next song, and it was you know what I mean it was real like I mean what 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 did that do now? What did that do? Number one, what did what did it do for your confidence? Being able to being able to do that. On, on on that stage with those caliber of players? You know what? I jumped the gun. What happened was I went to a a, a Nike camp in St. Louis. Okay. It was the it was the under three hundred it was like three hundred players in the camp, right? Okay. The top five players go to the actual camp in Indiana. And Got it. Happened. The Nike so this American was, camp. This is when I met D Brown. Uh it was me, D Brown, uh Matt Walsh from went to Florida. Florida right? David Lee was overlooking the joint. It was TJ Bannister. He's on. You listen. It was it was tough. So I fly out there, and my thing was I always woke up at four thirty in the morning. Always get up to go run. So I got on campus. I'm like, listen, uh, guy Kevin Owens who adopted me. He's like, listen, don't call me no nothing until you come back here with that. You know what I mean? You you going to the big camp? I'm like, all right, say no more. So I get there at 4.30, I run in the morning. Now I'm shooting, I'm shooting 100 shots before practicing. That's all, that was my whole routine from age 10 to now. You know what I'm saying? So get there, I tear the camp up, I get, I get MVP at the camp. Now they like, listen, two months later, you're going to the big camp. This is where I met DeJuan Wagner, Amari Stoudemire, uh, Tyson Chandler, mm-hmm. like, who else was there? Uh, Carlos Her. Everybody was there, bro. Everybody who was who was there. And that's when I was introduced, like, bro, you got work to do. Cause this is this is where Dewan Dewan came late, right? And they matched him up with Carlos Hurt. He came there, it was him, Rip Hamilton. He came in there in the limo, you know what I'm saying? Just just lazy with it, score 40 and just walked out. You know what I'm saying? So this is when I realized, like, you know what I mean? Like, for real, like, score 40 on them and say, yo, this is mm. who y'all got for me and walked out. And so, uh, yes, yeah, so, that, so that's when I, it was like, yo, I'm on a, I'm on a different scale here. And I was just local. Now this is, you know what I mean? This is nationwide. I'm like, yeah, you got work to put in. And so after that is when I got with the, uh, with the Panthers. With the Panthers. Yeah. So now, now did that, did that experience at the the Nike camp, did that now ignite a flame? Granted, you already you already putting in work, but yeah. did, seeing that, did that ignite another flame in you? Yeah, because this is where I was I became I've always been realistic about my game. You know what I mean? A lot of players like today, like, they take a lot of criticism to saying, okay, you're one dimensional. Me, I knew I'm not the I don't have the best handle in the world, but I knew I had this I had this gun. And if you let me get a shot, it's going in. So I said, I'm gonna perfect this. Like I ain't going to the what I need to go to the hole for if I'm three is better than two. And I'm a sharpshooter at it. So I just said, you know what? I'm just gonna show the world I'm the best shooter in the in the country. And that's what I did. Like I didn't if they were saying point guard, you need to get in the lane, that ain't my thing. But this right here, I'm gonna make a living off of this, and so that's mm. that's basically I say, yo, I just got to get around the right people so they can see what I can do, and that was it. So now, you 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 get with the Panthers, you do what yeah. you did in the same time, you going to yeah. going into your sophomore year. Where are you at confidence wise going into your sophomore year, Neptune? Listen, bro, my sophomore year, you know George Ravlin, right? That the head of Nike. He was the head of Nike. Yeah. They, they yeah. were like, listen, we got to keep you on the Nike circuit. So it was like, what do we got to do? I'm like, fund my team. Like, sponsor us with Nike. So they sent all type of Nike gear to the, to the, uh, to the team. Now, I ain't been with the team more than two months because I've been away the whole summer. They come back, it's new shoes, new everything. And they give me a special package on the side where I got my own you know what I mean? Stuff that ain't out. That's when I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm different. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'ma tear this up. 
And so, but my thing was, was, how do I, my, my mentality was, I'm not, I told you, I'm not the fastest. I don't jump the highest, but you're not going to outwork me. So when I, when I first got there, first practice, practice at, at eight, I'm there at six. But when I'm there, I'm in a full sweat. You know what I'm saying? So that was my way of showing them, like, listen, you're not going to break me. I don't know what y'all think this is, but I'm coming to get everything that I, I, I aim for. So my confidence was, was through the roof. It was through the roof. But that's when J.R. Smith, you know what I mean? This is this is when J.R. started to be J.R. Like, he came out of nowhere. So the short short conference was, it was pretty tough, but St. Pat's was, not St. Pat's, I mean St. Ant's was, you know, like Ingram and uh, Copeland. Wayne Lee, Copeland, yes. That, that there was like, that's the aim, you know what I mean? Like little public school, like we gotta get we gotta get at them. So I, I, I and and I want you to repeat what you said about getting to the gym two hours before original practice time, just in case we have any young athletes, anybody young, up and coming that yeah. that are aspiring to play, especially in the professional college professional ranks. How yeah. early how early would you get to practice? Always two hours. Now, this is even before I got with Patino. So we're going to get into that story. But it was always two because I've always had a had a, a, a phobia. I don't want to call it a phobia, but that somebody was gaining on me. Always had this mentality like, yo, if I'm not there, somebody else in, in, on the other side of the world or in the country, that's there. So for me, it was my, my psychological advantage on you. You'll see me there two hours early. You're trying to figure out what the hell am I doing wrong. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So by the time we get into practice, you getting warm. I'm already, my muscles is ready to go. And so I got advantage on you. Whether it'll be for an hour, I got advantage on you for an hour. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So that was my mentality of breaking you. I've always mm. been in the mentality of breaking you mentally. You know what I mean? I could break you down mentally because I'm going to attack you on the offensive end, but I'm going to pick you up full court in the defensive end. So I want to see where your where your where your heart is at, because you're gonna get tired, and that's when you separate the real from the fake when they get tired. Mm. That's just mm. always been my mentality. So now, mm. what what you you're it's 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 you know safe to say you had an extraordinary career yeah. at Neptune. Um, aside from going to the chip. Your senior year, did you guys ever win it all? Your sophomore, junior year? Nah. Uh -uh. nah. And then you uh -uh. lost the, eventually in a tournament of champions. You lost to St. Anthony's. Yeah. Yep. How, and... how? Well, before we even get into that, when did the recruiting process pick up for you? And, and and what was that experience like? That was that. That was right after the Nike camp, bro. It, <laughs> it went. They had the. They had the. That school year, they had to make up their own. I had my own mailbox inside of the school. Like I was own getting mailbox. I was getting fifty letters a day. Fifty. Fifty letters 50. a day. Fifty letters and this is no joke. Fifty letters a day. And that's when I knew I said, Oh, this is this is different. You know what I mean? Like and I knew where I wanted to go. I knew who I wanted to play for. I you already yeah, yeah. It, did, so wait, it didn't matter the school. Your sophomore, your yeah. sophomore year, you already knew. I already knew. Cause I told you, I, I've I've been a student of the game. I've always been a student of the game, mm. but I know my game. I know, I. That's the thing. What we talking about? If the youth, if the youth is looking, know who you are. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter the school, the name on it. Know who you are and who's gonna get the best out of you. Mm. Because I knew and the story with, with Patino, it came out of it was a blessing. It wasn't something that I thought was gonna happen. It just happened to, he just happened to get fired from Boston. You know what I mean? And Syracuse was coming to the practice that night. You know what I mean? I'm going to school. I'm watching ESPN before I go to school. And it's like, you know, Boston lets Patino go. Boom. I just got a letter in the mail that the, the day before. Just, a, you know, one of those, I get the, I see the number on it. I tell, I tell you know, Kevin Owens who adopted me, yo, listen, I'm going to school. Give him a call. Like, call him. And he like, what you mean? I'm like, yo, call him. And so I was already tight with Sonny Vaccaro. 
on the Adidas circuit. You know what I mean? Louisville's Adidas. So I, right. he calls Sonny and I get home. I, I mean, uh, what's his name? I forget the uh, assistant coach from uh, Syracuse. Damn, what's his name? Well, he, Not Adrian he, Orchard. Not Adrian nah, Orchard. Uh, he, he actually ended up be, being the head coach at some point. What's his name, man? At, at Syracuse? Syracuse? Yeah. At the Bayham left. Who, who took over at the Bayham? Uh, no. Not Bayham left, but he, like, filled in. I think he oh, got – Man. Anyway, he was at the practice. And me and Melo, we was, uh, we was uh, roommates at the USA, USA uh, thing my junior year. Okay. And so when he brought it about, he's like, yo, listen, and the offense with Melo, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is it. And I, it's Big East. I want to be in the Big East. But then the next day is when Patino, you know what I mean, he he got fired and long story short, Patino ended up calling Sonny. And Sonny vouched for me. Like just like that. I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with Syracuse. On the on the next line is yeah, it's Rick Patino. Drop okay. the phone. And he, he sat said Mike Hopkins? Mike Hopkins, word. Mike That's Hopkins. Mike Hopkins. And he he's a good dude. Mike Hopkins is a good dude. So while I'm on the phone with Mike Hopkins. Patino's on the other line. Mm. It's Rick Patino. Drop the phone. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nah. He's like, listen, I talked to, you know, he's giving me the whole, the whole pitch. I'm like, yo, coach, you ain't even got to do that. He's like, what you mean? I said, well, I signed. You, you need to take a visit first. No, I don't. Mm. He said, he said, you serious? I don't need to see. First off, I already knew Louisville with Milt Wagner. Billy Thompson, you know what I mean, Nate Johnson. I already knew the connection. I'm like I said, I'm a student of the game. Mm. So I'm like, if they could go there and do what they did, it, it has to be I. Right. And so, then once, so I, I, I didn't mean to interject, but I, I no. just want to say this real quick. So without taking a visit, uh -huh. without taking a visit, Patino gets on a horn. You get on a horn. That and you say to him, I'm coming. I'm, I'm, it's, it's a done deal. He said, I've never had, you know what I mean? I never had somebody just say they're not, they're not going to take a visit. Wow. What I need to take a visit for? I got, I got my guy. You know what I'm saying? I already know what I, where he could take me to. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So he came to see me play. He was like, listen, at least I got to come see you play. And I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he comes, you know what I mean? He comes to the gym. They block a whole section off of him. I'm in warm -ups, like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm not feeling it tonight. <laughs> Bro, I might have went 0 for 15. Mm. But the thing was, I played both sides of the ball. So right. defensively, so I'm down, you know what I mean? On top of it, Neptune is already where I'm at. I'm not from there. I'm not, I'm not their guy. I'm just being, right. keeping the buck. Right. So they like Patino. They Patino never came. No, no caliber coach ever came to their to their gym like that. And they like he ain't even like that. Like why are you here? So I got the crowd. Oh, yeah, hey, bro. Your crowd. Your yes. crowd. Yes. Is basically heckling you, telling yes. Patino you not yes. like that. Now wait. Let's let's. Now this is your sophomore year. No, nah, this is this is my senior year. Okay, your senior year. Yeah. So they're telling him. You're not even like that. Yeah, I, listen, bro. And I'm going 0 for 15. So just think about it. I'm hearing the crowd say, yo, he ain't even like that. I'm playing bad. And Patino's right there. I'm like, oh, he's going to take the scholarship. Like, that's all I could think about. Like, he's going, I'm in the locker room, head down. He coming in there. He like, listen, put your head up. Look at him. He like, I don't give a fuck about offense. Mm. That, ain't, that mm. ain't what I'm about. I can see you got a nice shot. Defensively though, that's where that's where you're gonna have your staple at. He was like, pick your head up. I see it. When he said that, that was over after that. He was like, listen, I can't, you know what I mean? I can't wait to get you. You know what I'm saying? So when he said that is when I knew I was like, all right, I was a student of the game. Defensively held me. You know what I mean? It got so we talking about the youth. Everybody wanna be stuck on his offense. And I, for me, like it, it, it rubs me the wrong way because it's, it's both. I, I get James Harden. Talk to him. James Harden is James Harden. 
special talent, but everybody can't be James Harden. Mm. And defensively, that's why that's why I, I've always loved Kobe, because he didn't care about getting crossed, nothing. Like he did, you could bust his ass. He's gonna keep coming harder defensively. Don't run from the challenge. If you want to get to the next level, if you want to play 15 years, you got to have something that somebody else don't have. Mm. You know what I mean? Everybody can score. You can find that anywhere. But everybody ain't going to play no defense, man. And that's where I, that's where my 15-year came from with the defensive end. You know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I'm amazed and fascinated by – just the simple fact that you knew ninth, tenth grade, you already knew yeah. where you wanted to go. And the fact that you were such a student of the game at such an early age, it allowed you to say, listen, and enabled you to say, look, I don't have to take a visit. I got the guy that I've always wanted to play for. I know my game is tailor-made for his style. That's where I want to go. I think that is, you know, I mean, it's it's, it's incredible, man. That's that's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah, but the, the the thing is, is now I gotta now I'm in his hands. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I right. know who I want to play for. Right. But now you you saw it from the outside. You in the right. inside now. Right. So so now you have you have a a, a a great high school career. Like we said, you lost um St. Anthony's. In the tournament of champions, um, now, now you're stepping into a totally different realm of basketball. Conference USA, uh, one of the toughest conferences in the country. Louisville University, mm -hmm. prestigious university. Rick Pitino, gotcha. Hall of Famer, legendary. Your freshman year, what kind of adjustment was it for you, and what was the transition like for you that the, your first year? Before I even get there, now, at the graduation, you know, the the family that adopted me. Right. We get into it pretty bad. You get what I'm saying? Like, let me just paint the picture for you. Okay. To where it's like, I'm going there, but I got nowhere to come back. Meaning, like, we, we beefed that hard that it was no coming. Like, you have no home. You get what they, I'm saying? They didn't want Not, you they and it wasn't on there. I'm not. I'm not here to. You know. It's no, just. No, no, no. We, we, Listen. No. Nah, talk. Yeah. Talk. We had a disagreement, right? I'm at the point where it's like I'm a grown man now. You get what I'm saying? I got freedom. So, the disagreement led to okay. Then you know what I mean. Relationship cut. So in my mind is, I've always felt like I didn't have a home. So it's like I'm going here and this is it. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna make this happen, but. I can't come back because there's no home there. So I get there. I get on campus. I get there early to do my classes and all that. I'm a buck, buck 65. You know what I'm saying? I'm a buck 65 soaking wet. So I'm thinking, okay, I did it at every level. I'm going to do it here. So we get to individuals. And, bro, I couldn't I couldn't go. as Reese Gaines as a senior. I don't know if you know him. Tough. Right? Tough. Bro, Reece I couldn't. I couldn't get the shit past hat. I couldn't get the shit past foul line, bro. Like, Patino's up there watching. You know what I mean? Watching it. I can't get it past the foul line, bro. Like, he's he's stronger than me. You know, he, he, was, he, was, he was a bully. Patino calls me to the office. He's like, yo, like, I, I might have been wrong about this. You know what I mean? This <laughs> like, is what he's saying to you in the office. Bro. And he always, he always had, like, an envelope, you know what I'm saying, like, in his drawer. And he just he just like pointed like like points an envelope like I think you might have to go home. Then he tells me they recruited they bringing in a JUCO All American or whatever at point guard. He was like, I don't know what you're gonna do, but you you gonna have to figure it out. And I'm like, all right, just give me a month, coach. Give me a month. Like so, as soon as we left that meeting, I go down to the strength coach. I'm like, yo, listen, we gotta do three of these. He looking at me like. Three a days. Bro, I said, there's, I have nowhere. I can't go back home. You get what I'm saying? If he take my scholarship, where I'm going? He don't know that. I'm like, I'm not going home. Like, I, don't give, I don't care what I got to do. I'm going to do three of days. 
Bro, and I said, I'm going to start every game of my four-year career. And I promise you, those three days, I started every game of my career, bro. But, yeah, so, you know, I, I go on the, this is when I started. I always, I told you, I always woke up at 4.30 in the morning. So I was like, all right, I will come in, and I wanted to see how early Coach P would come in. He usually come in around 5, 5.30. You'll see his little light. You know, the gym would be dark, but you'll see his office light. So, boom, I caught it one day. I said, all right, it comes around like 5, 5.30. So, shit, I'm going to be here at 4.30 on the gun. You know the gun. You know the gun. You know the gun got, it shows you how many shots you, you shoot. Yes. You shoot. I said, all right, so. Make percentage, yes. Exactly. So his window is, all, is to the right corner. I'm going to shoot on the opposite end in the dark so he can see. You know what I'm saying? Like, serious. So he can see how many shots I got up. So the first, the first, you know what I mean? For, the first time he see me, he don't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? He just go by or whatever. I'm doing this every day. He turns on the light one day. He's looking like, hey, what the fuck are you doing? Like, he's looking at like, like fuck is you doing? I'm like, what you mean? Like, don't you got class? Yeah, I got class, but I'm here. So that right there, that what the fuck are you doing became a mutual respect. Like, mm. this is who we, this is who he is. So the freshman year went great. Sophomore year, we play our first game and it was Indiana and we got to ask kill. So he was always, before we came to our sophomore year, he was like, yeah, y'all freshman year was cool, but y'all going to have that sophomore jinx. He used to always say it. And I'd be like, man, what the fuck does that mean? That first game, we got killed. Called me and Garcia into the office. Francisco Dude, Garcia, tough. This shit is on y'all. This runs between y'all. So what y'all, y'all came in here, y'all thought it was sweet. Now everybody got film of y'all and they know y'all weaknesses. What y'all going to do? I said, all right. Lead, lead the office. I told Cisco, I'm like, yo, we got to go to Walmart. What the fuck is you talking about? We got to go get sleeping bags. He was like, what? I said, yo, I'm sleeping in this. I'm, I'm no yo, lie. If, if yo, anybody know Patino, yo. yeah, I'm dead serious. You, y'all went and got sleeping bags? Bro, went and got sleeping bags. I'm like, listen, this is how we're going to break it down. We're going to get 3,000 shots a day. He was like, yo, how the fuck are we going to do that? I said, yo, you get 500 in a half hour. I said, just break it down. We get 3,000. So we would be in there playing one-on-ones. We would get the uh, the construction gloves, put the uh, the paper bag, I mean the plastic bag on the ball, and we going, we going at it. And so we order pizza. You know what I mean? They come. We go to sleep. We did this for like five days in a row. Coach P comes in. Like, we had our little uh, film room. We were sleeping in the film room. So Coach P came in one morning. It was early. Tripped over, I think, Cisco, like, the f He looked. <laughs> you know what I mean? What the fuck? He's like, because usually, usually we get up in time to put the uh, sleeping bags away to where nobody sees. Right. This time, we, just, we, was, we was bugging out the night before in the gym, and he caught us, and he was just like, and I looked at him. I was like, yo, you said the shit was on our, on our shoulders. Like, what else are we supposed to do? And right then is when we got the mutual respect from Coach P to where we had the green light to do whatever. Mm. People thought the green light came from, oh, he's a good shooter. Right. Nah, Coach P, right. he wants to see the work you put in. And so that's where, you know what I mean? That, that's where, you know what I mean? It, everything led to, man. Your freshman year, though, you still had a formidable freshman campaign. You made you made all freshman teams. That was like close to ten points. Yeah. Solid freshman year. Yeah. Your first three years, you guys go to the tournament. And see mm -hmm. your junior year, we'll get to that. But your junior year being the best year overall um, as a team, because you guys go to the final four. Yeah. But now, for you, I mean, in your mind now, when you are putting in this work, right? When you're there and you're putting in this work, what are your expectations of yourself while you're putting in this work? All right, so I never I never told anybody this. I never wanted to make the NBA, bro. That was never a thought of mine. 
Everybody else never just said it. Everybody else, I wanted to see the world, bro. Like, my thing you was... Never, because, never, never wanted to play in the league. Because I dealt with so much death. As a child, I'm like, there's more to this world than just here. Mm. I've always wanted to see the world. Mm. I just, you know what I mean, kept the... Everybody want to push me to make the NBA, but I never wanted to make it. I just was like, listen, anything to get out of Jersey, anything to get out of my environment, that's a win for me. That's a plus. So NBA, yeah, if it was possible, I didn't, I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't think so. I'm just like, yo, I look, like I said, I was always realistic. I'm like, listen, I'm not the most athletic. You get what I'm saying? To get to the league, you got to be, you got to be D-Wag. You got to be that. You know what I'm saying? I never looked at myself like that. I just like, I, I do what I do, and I, I stay in my lane. But I never, that wasn't my thing. Mm. Now, I came realistic my junior year. Right. I was like, okay, you you doing something here. But in the back of my mind, I still felt like, nah, that ain't you, bro. So, yeah. So, but 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 in saying that now to yourself mentally, are you mm -hmm. are you then saying you know what, I still want to play professional? Did you always want to play professional, but wanted to play abroad, wanted to play overseas? See, that's the thing. That's that's environment. See that when we get back, I mean, at the end of this environment, right? right. How I grew up, I've always moved in, in fear in, in a sense, like oh, I'm not good enough. So I pretty much blocked certain things, like certain blessings of mine, I pretty much blocked it myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if you look at the way the game is played now with Steph, put me back in, put me now in this. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Put me now, then we talk, it's a different story. But what I'm saying is I didn't have the, the tools or the resources for people to be like, yo, listen, you are this great. Or you can do this. I just felt like I made it to this point. That's that's a a, a plus. I ain't think I can make it no further. But my junior years, when I was like, "Yo, listen," went against Nate Robinson. You know what I mean? In the tournament went against Will Bynum. You held your own. You know what I'm saying? So it's possible. But you know, we you you want to get into that? You want to get into the junior year? We yeah. Now. Sophomore year, statistically now, you do better than your freshman year. You average about 11 points, yeah, so to speak. Um, now, you guys go to the tournament again. I think you guys, what do you guys lose in the second round? First, first, yeah. Second, second yeah. Round. You come back your junior year. Mm -hmm. Each year that you're coming back, are you setting – individual goals for yourself in terms of production, in terms of wanting to obviously play better and do better than you did the previous year? Yeah, I mean, coming into... See, the problem was Patino was killing us, bro. Mm. Like, we were in the best shape of our life in the beginning. And we always, when we hit, we hit a wall in, in the middle of, this, middle of the year every time. So we'll be killing everybody in the beginning of the season and get to the end, we're dead. Right. And so going into the junior year, I'm like, yo, listen, coach, we keep losing first round, second round. It's not because of the talent. It's because we tired. And Coach P was at this point looking at me like, you getting sold. I'm like, nah, we got we to gotta think differently. So we started that year. Now, all my, my, my uh, teammates is probably your own head. We would wake up. Freshman year, we'll wake up, I think, like, 4.35. The bigs had to run a mile, I want to say, in five minutes, 30. That's some Olympic, you know what I'm saying? The guards had to. That's the big man. I may be off a little bit, but it was something ridiculous. Like, the guards had to run a mile in, like, four or something or just five flat. Bro, I'm dead serious. And after that, we'll leave. This is at five. We'll leave. Then we got to do individual. And his individual was no joke. It's full contact, body to body. Mm -hmm. If you make a move to go to the rack and you don't go body to body, come back and do it again. Like you had the pads, everything. 
one on one until you drop. And it was like, yo, coach, we can't do that this year. Right. Run out of so gas. We started swimming. You know what I mean? He started being a little light on us, swimming. And what because what happened, we we started the 6 a.m. program where it started with three players and so the the whole team and then the staff, we all going at it in the weight room. Mm-hmm. With Coach Pete and Coach Pete didn't have to do anything. It was like we already doing this. Shout out Larry O'Bannon, salute. Hello, which is my guy. And, you know what I mean? We started that. And Coach P started to be like, listen, I don't have to control them no more. They pretty much wow. doing it on their own. Wow. So he respected, okay, they're already putting in the work on their own. All right, we could do the swing. He could be, he could let up on us. When he did that is when we took off. What was that experience like? I mean, obviously... The previous two years, sophomore and freshman campaign, you experienced the tournament. But yeah. just briefly explain, man, what was it like going to the Final Four, playing on a national level, playing against all these different dudes, and pretty much doing more than holding your own? All right, so like I told you, I was a student in the game. I always had this poster of Tyus Edney on my wall, and I'm, I'm, I'm being real. I would cry to this poster every night. Yo, God, let me get to this point. That's serious. It was when, I, I, don't, I forget who was holding him up, but he just hit a shot, big shot or whatever. And so when we got past uh, Georgia Tech, matter of fact, no, we was, in, we was in Atlanta. I forget who we played. Will Bynum, we played Will Bynum in there. I think it was Georgia Tech. And uh, once it was like, yo, bro, like, y'all about to get there is when I started to relive my childhood. I'm like, yo, listen, this is coming. This is actually happening. You get what I'm saying? And Coach P was just giving his, his resume. He was always cool, cool, calm, and collective. But he always had a... We follow his 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 uh his DNA. Like he always had something to prove. Like he always knew that they was out out gunning for him. Always. So we we carried that same that same mentality. But we already knew going in. We looking at it, me, Cisco, Larry, we all shooting a three point at like forty clip. Everybody's at like forty something percent. So at that point we looking like who who's gonna deal with a three headed monster? And then we got Ellis Miles, who was a straight gangster, who just knew how to play. Undersized big man, but just knew how to play. And then we just had a whole bunch of killers. We had we had guys that wasn't highly recruited. Right. It was just killers. So once we knew we got further, we was like, yo, there's nobody going to stop us. Nobody. Because they, we, Patino was in the breaking people, man. Like, I'm going to be honest. Say we got a guard that averaged... 20. We wouldn't come into film or that week scared because he would always tell the story when they uh, played Tim Duncan when he was at Kentucky and the shit they did to Tim Duncan. Like they just forced him baseline and helped and fouled him and they just broke him. Like after the first first half they knew, oh, he's broken. Mm. So everybody we played, like we just was like, yo, listen, we let them do their thing in the, in the beginning. We just tiring them out. You know what I mean? Let, let him feel like he's getting it easy. Bro, when we turn it up, it was like, yo, he's t- once we saw he put his hands on it, because we couldn't put our hands on our knees. In practice, if you put your hands on your knees, straight to the treadmill. You think I'm playing. You yo, think, yo, listen. Yo, you know what's crazy? Shout out to our guy, man, Wayne Turner. Salute. Wayne Turner, we chopped it up with him like about a week or two ago. Listen. He said the same thing. He said Bro. Patino was different. Bro, different. listen. We, the way our gym was set up, like you could run directly off the floor into the, into the, uh, the cardio room. Our strength trainer is sitting there waiting on his knees for us. Like, I'm, listen to me. The treadmill is going, bro. It's yeah. on automatic. Like, the first, <laughs> you think I'm playing? Bro, yeah. full court press. You mess up straight straight there. You running. You got to jump off there back into the press. Ain't no water. Get a break. No. You run on the trail incline. 
<laughs> Yo. And you, as Yo. soon as you put your hand, you put your hands on your knees, get back on there. Bro, Coach P was different to the point where he was like, "Yo, y'all, y'all out of shape. So meet me in a in a cardio room." We like, "What you mean, meet meet you in the cardio room?" Basically, whoever could outlast him. Let's see, bro. This man, this man is in there in some in some short shorts. You know them old school, <laughs> old school short shorts, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Brokers, bro. I'm telling you, broke everybody. Broke everybody. That's the that's the type of duty he he's the type that he's not just telling you he's doing it. What kind of what kind of mental toughness? What kind of mental edge and mental fortitude does that give you? Once you can get once you can get through it, what does that do to you psychologically and mentally? Bro, for me, like I would look at you and say, there's no way. I hear guys all the time say, my coach was crazy. You know what I mean? We run, we run. I knew for a fact that they were, they didn't experience what we experienced. Because I'm going to give you an instance. We, we pressing. And we keep, we keep messing up. So go back. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like there was no sub. I literally I saw stars, bro. I'm looking at him like, I'm about to pass out. That man looked at me and said, go ahead. I don't give a fuck if you die out here. When he said that is when I was, yo, I'm dead serious. Bro, he, he wasn't playing. Yo. He wasn't playing. He was like, yo. yo, I don't care if you die out here. You not, no sir. That right there is when I realized that I had a different gear. Because when you say you're going to die, it's like, shit, I could really, you know what I mean? And when he said, listen, bro. <laughs> And he said, no. I had players do it. <laughs> Listen, I had players do it before. Like, this nigga really had somebody die on him? And, yo. <laughs> yo. Yo. I'm serious. With a, straight, with, a, with a straight face. Yo, shout out to the legend, Rick Pitino. Yo, you love that man. Hopefully, hopefully nobody... <laughs> he, ain't, he, ain't that same, he ain't that same beast no more, bro. He's different. <laughs> He's a little older. Yo. Are you serious? So that right there is when when I realized that was a mental game, and I was able to fight through that. And that's when I realized, like, yo, I'd rather die. I, I, I know I ain't going to die, so I'm not going to push it to another gear. Mm. So that right there, that instant when, he, when I was able to get through that is when I was like, I'm going to stop. The final four. Mm -hmm. What was the final four like? Bro, I'm gonna be honest with you. We was dead. Like mm -hmm. we we played we played uh, West Virginia. I don't know if you know about that game. We was down twenty. And the outs first we had Nate Robinson and them Washington. That was tough. You know what I'm saying? That game took a lot out. We was in the altitude in New Mexico. Mm. We came down. We came back from twenty something. Ended up winning that game overtime. Right. You had, is that the game you had like seven threes? No. Yeah. Nah, yeah, but I shot, I shot them there, 25 of them. <laughs> <laughs> listen, hey, yeah. shoot and shoot, baby. Exactly. Shoot and shoot. Listen, I put in the work, you know what I mean? Like, I might as well, so. Yes. But nah, Larry, Larry O'Bannon is the one that held us down. Like, he was the one that, that was it, that was all him. But we was dead, bro. Once we got there, it was like, Mind you, Cisco wanted Carolina because he had something with uh, what's my man name? The forward McCann. He had some. He had something from prep school. Really? It was, yeah. Listen, when I say it was something, I don't know what happened, but as soon as he saw him when we did like the ceremony, it was about to be a fight. You serious? Like I'm dead serious. Like so, so Cisco Francisco, he wanted to put hands on McCants? bro. It was that serious. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, there's a girl? Like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is for, you know what I mean? Like, what happened? Yo, he was dead, dead bent on, yo, I'm going I'm to bust this nigga out. I'm going to bust this nigga out. Like, he wanted Carolina. Yeah, he wanted them. But we ended up getting D Brown. 
And that's that's when it came full circle. Like me and D started here and we here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And we was just dead, man. Like if we had our legs, I believe we'd have won it. As far as as far as experiencing, you know, getting to the final four and experiencing being on a on a national national stage, what was that feeling like? Coming from that tune, bro. And the, the just the journey. Just a journey there. And I'm like, you know, a lot of guys from Jersey didn't experience that. Yeah. So for me, it was like, you made it. Like, I was good. I was good after that. Like, I'm honest. I, I made it to the Final Four. Like, it was always a dream. And you know what I mean? Like, we worked for that. Like, right. it wasn't like it was a mistake. Like, Patino really made us work for that. So that was that was just basically and actually giving him his uh his due. Right. You know what I mean? So that that was that was perfect. 